Being raised Jewish, is it because um, you were more familiar with the, the belief structure of, of Judaism and you weren't, you weren't that familiar with the underpinnings of Christianity and, and other things? Is that the reason why Carrie seemed like a comedy to you when you first read it? No. No? No, no. Uh, and I've played nuns, and I've done a lot of studying of, of other religions, very related to work I've done. Uh, no, I, I, I think, in my opinion, which doesn't really count, uh, it doesn't really matter what I thought about Stephen King's original story. And it was the first, I believe. Did you read the book? Yes, I you did. Read the script? Um, I read it afterwards, thinking maybe I would be enlightened and get something. Were you? No. no. I, I think that he got much, much better. His stories and characters grew substantially after Carrie. I thought it was very simple and I thought cliche, frankly. Uh, you know, the mother, the stern, strict religious mother with her hair pinned into a bun. It was, it was all... Your hair wasn't pinned into a bun. No. I love that you let your hair down. Well, that that's was... how I wore it to rehearsals. And the set designer, who was Sissy Spacek's husband, uh, saw me at rehearsal standing under an archway in Brian De Palma's home. And he said, Piper, are you gonna wear your, how are you going to wear your hair? And I said, well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> And he said, Brian, come on over here. Take a look at Piper under that art. That looks great. And, and, and I, I was just wearing it loose like mm -hmm. that, not bothering to straighten it or anything. So he, that was how it was decided that I, uh, I'd wear my hair like that. I think maybe on certain levels, Elmer Gantry uh, kind of perpetuated the same thing, but differently. But um, Margaret White is, I think, without a doubt, one of the most iconic representations of the fundamentalist agenda. Does it, what are your thoughts, do you mind if I ask you what your thoughts are about the fundamentalist agenda? Um, does it upset you? Or do you see it more of a kind of a, uh, a necessary rite of passage in, in, in this arena that we call life? You know, you can't have the, you can't have the good without the bad, you know, the chaos without the, the peace. I mean, in that sense, so we wouldn't have great stories to tell if there was no chaos, if there was no fundamentalist agenda. Well, I thought my duty as an actress was to get as deeply into who she was as possible and not play it for the superficially or for the cliches to try to just dig in and make it substantial. So. Uh, it may not have been exactly as it was intended. Hmm. But Brian let me have the, a free reign there. And sometimes we shot scenes uh, and didn't rehearse them. At least two scenes anyway. Oh, really? The end scene, right? Where yes. Yes, the end scene was not rehearsed. And, um, um, he, he let me just get into position. It was my idea. Because I knew I wanted to be brave as possible and expose Margaret's deep longings and feelings uh, as deeply as I could find them for her. And what, what I never want? wanted to do it more than once because I wanted it to be as raw as possible. And so I asked Brian if, we, if I could just get the position and the light, and said, so that's what we did. Uh, when, we, when I finished the first time, and he was very happy, he said, but I'm so sorry, Piper. Would you mind doing it one more time? You know, it's, there's always one more time. But it was, I guess it was OK, and I don't know which take they used, but I, I was able to be f full again for it. Those numbers between the mother and the daughter, uh, especially And Eve Was Weak, which is one of my favorites, some of those numbers are just fascinating between the mother and the daughter. And I think 
uh, as a musical representation of the frightening effects of religious fanaticism. I, uh, did you did you get that last night when watching when watching the mother daughter? I I was very touched last night at, at watching that Carrie the musical, and when Margaret Wright dragged Carrie into the closet, I was so moved. I, and I, oh my, it was, I was a, kind of out of body. I, I mean, it was, um, I under, I wondered if that's how people felt when they were watching me with Sissy Spacek. Um, it just really got me in the pit of my stomach. And at the end of the first act, I was just weeping. Just, um, were both, both the women, they were so good and so touching. But getting to the religious aspect of it, I, I personally don't care uh, what people feel, what, what they worship, and I think they have a right to do whatever makes them feel comfortable and helps them through their life. I don't think we have a right to criticize anybody else's belief. That I believe in very strongly. Um, and I have nothing against any, any religion. It's interesting, you know, in the, in the gay and lesbian and, uh, community, uh, there's been a rash of uh, suicides over the last few years. I'm not sure if you've been aware of that, but there's there seems to have been a bit of a rash of suicides uh, among this community, and um, and and the the bullying thing in Carrie, uh, this new artistic team from the musical, yes. seems to have really kind of uh, embraced uh, that faction of, of bullying in this country as as kind of a um, uh, a bandwagon that they they want to kind of uh, I think use as a as a proactive way to uh, maybe encourage people and uh, inspire them to hopefully see past what is you know hurting them inside and and making them take such drastic choices on themselves. It's interesting though because in the era of Stephen King's book and the film uh, and even the 1988 incarnation of Carrie the Musical. You know, there was no, there were no quotations around the term bullying. It was just kind of a... Uh, there. It was just there, yeah. yeah. And it's only been in the last few years that, that the term seems to have taken on a new, a new meaning. I, you know, it, I get the impression that this is a... It's uh, one of the... It's kind of the, one of the current things that that uh, the press uh, like to find it easy to talk about on their news shows. Uh, to me, it's a crutch. It's always been there. I don't know if it's any worse now or not. Uh, I, I, it, I really don't know. I guess you could say the, the activities of the House Un-American Activities Committee were the biggest bullies of all. <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you were there for that. It's not true that I was there for the time of um, the McCarthy uh, you had investigation. Left, you had left Hollywood? No, I was an adolescent making movies, and that's all that was, I, I was focusing on. That was my life. I, I, I never read a newspaper. It wasn't until I became involved with somebody who was on the fringe of that and got into trouble that I began to read papers and, and understand what was happening. And only then did I begin to know what, what a tragedy uh, it was. Right. No, I, I was ignorant. I was terribly ignorant. Uh, during that period, and it took me a while to catch up. Were you friends with Zero Mostel? Was that who, who no, well, I did know Zero Mostel, not, not well. during that time? No. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I probably did. But, um, and actually, I ran into my Uncle Maury 
work behind the counter at the Tiptoe Inn uh, in those days, and I went to visit him once when I and uh, when I came to town, and he and he said, well, "Sissy, go sit down and have lunch." You know, one of our customers, Zero, is there, so I I sat with Zero. He and I. Or maybe he invited me. The two, somebody recently told me they saw me sitting with Zero at the Tiptoe Inn having lunch. <laughs> wow. Wow. What was it that inspired you to want to direct your friend Jim Brochu in Zero Hour? Well, Jim is inspiring. And, and he invited me to all of the, the, the read-throughs that he had early on as he was writing and working on the material. And, and he invited me to, to give my opinion. And after a while, he asked me to be the director. Now, he knew Zero as well, right? Didn't he? Uh, yes, he knew him as a young boy. He met him a few times. Yes. Uh, he has lovely stories to tell. I wouldn't even try. He was a, an adolescent, a, a chubby adolescent, and he went to see him backstage and in the show. And it, it's a wonderful story. I'm, I'm, I'm completely amazed at looking through Jim's website and seeing all the photos of him as a younger man, you know, with all these luminaries, Joan Crawford and, and all of them. It's, I, I find that so inspiring. Um, what do you think of, of the industry, of the entertainment industry, and how it has changed, evolved? Well, how do you how do you mean it, it has evolved? Well, it's certainly I would call it an oversaturated industry. Do you think that's safe? Do you think that's a fair assumption? O oversaturated Oversatur with people wanting to be in the entertainment industry. You know, whether it's oh, that's that's yes. Everybody does want to have their fifteen minutes of fame. Yeah, and that's sort of too bad. It cheapens life because it's. It's all. It's still out there for the real stuff. As somebody that who has been in it for the long haul, uh, is it just a natural evolution, or do you have thoughts in terms of whether you? Well, all I know is that I'm glad I'm not just starting out now. I don't think I'd man make it. Um, um, that not many people are really serious about being creative. They're mostly interested in being successful. And it's a difficult world now. You can understand why. But also, there seem to be so many genuinely talented young people. I mean, really good. I don't know where that comes from. And they, and they believe in themselves, and they have the courage to take care of themselves and speak up for themselves. Something I never knew how to do. Well, that must, have, that must say a lot for your talent, if you didn't think that you had the ability, and yet you transcended your, 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 your drawbacks, you know. Well, I knew I was good. It was just I needed an opportunity to... Oh, and that's an old story. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you had the opportunity. Thank you.